In brightest day, in blackest night, here's your look at the new McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Justice League member, Green Lantern. Recognized by the Guardians of Oa for having extraordinary courage and heroism, Jon Stewart was awarded a power ring and trained to be a member of the Green Lantern Corps. After years of patrolling the deepest regions of space, Jon returned home to protect Earth as a member of the Justice League. Armed with perhaps the mightiest weapon in the known universe, Green Lantern uses his power ring's emerald energy to accomplish the impossible. Continuing our looks through the new multiverse figures from the folks over at McFarlane Toys, the next one we're going to have a look at is Jon Stewart from the Justice League cartoon. Or, close enough. Talk about a little bit more of that in a second. According to the uh, tape measure here, if I'm reading this right, Jon Stewart from the DC Multiverse stands 7.1 inches in height. And in centimeters, that works out to be 18.1 centimeters tall. And we've already had a look at a couple of animated figures. There's Superman from the animated series. I've got him on a display stand. And here he is next to Batman. Batman seems the most worse for wear when it comes to trying to get him to properly stand. It still seems the culprit is these legs. The legs just want to kind of split out when you're putting them on display. But as you can see, the figures themselves all seem to be sporting the exact same torso piece, the same arm piece, the same leg piece, not quite obviously the same head piece. And there, of course, is some mold changes. The panel lining, for example, on Jon Stewart wasn't there on either both soups or bats. But as you can see, other than that, they seem to be sharing the same similar body molds. It seems like all the other figure reviews that we've done thus far for the DC Multiverse have all started with looking at the trading card. Well, it seems like it's working so far. No need to be changing that anytime soon. To come included with Jon Stewart, you get yourself a really thick, hefty cardboard card depicting a bald Jon Stewart on the front. Ironically enough, this figure is based on his exploits in the Justice League. However, this isn't his earliest appearances. In the earlier appearances, he had longer hair, actually kind of a military cut, and he was clean shaving. Ironically enough, Commander Sisko in Deep Space Nine, I believe played by Avery Brooks, also went through the same metamorphosis, a sort of shorter hairstyle, clean shaven, and then went bald with a goatee. Hmm, I wonder if there's any connection there. Anyways. On the back of the card, I'm sure I'm not the only one that's observed that. On the back, it tells us the source material for Jon Stewart is pulled from Justice League, an animated series from 2001. Real name is Jon Stewart, height 6 foot 1, and weight is a very modest 200 pounds. I don't know where these guys are hiding their weight. That's the card that comes included with this, and uh, actually so far I've been storing these in trading card sheets. Because I kind of like these. I like to hold on to souvenirs for the figures I've been collecting along the ways. Things that you're also going to be collecting along the ways. Let me spin it around. He comes included with the same circular black matte black display stand that have come included with every other figure. Yells somebody at the back of the crowd, what about the Superman? Yes, the Superman is the exception to the rule. He had the clear stand. And I'm sure we're probably going to see that one again. Uh, the thing about it, though, I mean, for Jon Stewart and ironically even Superman, he could have, both of them even could have come with the same stand that came included with the Action Comics 1000 Superman. Anyways, the stand itself is simple but effective and just like the fact that a company actually takes the time to include a stand when you really think about how many times companies don't include them. Gosh darn it, you really start to, start to really appreciate it when the companies actually do. So thank you, McFarland Toys, for that. The other trinkets that come included with the figure, one of which being this rather large translucent 
green plastic construct. This would have been created from his ring, and though Jon Stewart, of course, has military ties, he would have more militaristic sort of constructs instead of fun and playful things like, say, Kyle Rayner would have had, for example. It's done really neat and intricate in design. The thing about it, though, is there's a handle right there, which almost makes you think that he can hold it. Well, he only has one hand. Well, that's not true. He has one gripping hand and one normal hand. So you would almost even think that it could fit inside there. Try as I might, I actually can't get him to attach it to the handle. But it, it does seem a bit of a tease, doesn't it? The fact that this is also butting up against the back of his forearm. Yeah, there's no real easy way. I mean, unless you put his hand this way. But I really don't want to risk that with, for the thickness of plastic that they used. But it really feels like it should attach this way. Instead, what it actually does is attaches to this hand here. And while you may try to do that with his hand on, it doesn't seem like there's enough clearance. His thumbsy sort of gets in the way of things. And one of the problems I have with this figure is every single time I try to take the hand off, what ultimately ends up happening is, and I'm hoping it doesn't happen in this instance, half this part here, and it's not the only place that this occurs on this figure, but half of the joint ends up coming off with the hand. I've wiggled it a couple of times, I've tried even using a little bit of heat, and it struggles every single time I try to do it. But essentially what you need to do is you need to take the hand completely off, and then the forearm fits inside the construct. Oh, see if I can actually get it off now. Watch this be the one time, no, see, it comes, comes every single time. I'm going to have to take some pliers and see if I can pry that off. The last thing I certainly would want to do is break the peg, but it, at least it serves for the purpose of showing me what, showing you guys how exactly it works. So just take the hand off, and then the forearm fits right inside of that. I thought, again, the hand, the opening inside would be big enough to accommodate both the hand and the forearm, but it doesn't seem to be the case. It seems like it's way too small. Could they not simply have made that a little bit wider to accommodate a fist? It's almost there. It's almost there, but it's not quite. Anyways, that's what it looks like when you put that onto his arm. It looks neat, and I'll probably end up likely displaying him with it. The other thing he comes included with is this. It's sort of a communication device. I guess he uses that to communicate to the League, and that just attaches to the back here. And again, it just kind of looks like that. When I initially got it out of the packaging, I silly, foolish me, Thought it was actually a visor. Realized quickly later, you stupid idiot, it's supposed to go to the back like that. And again, like he's just got kind of a bit of a communication device. Like a little uh, walkie-talkie, little, I guess a two-way radio. How dated are we by our describing of this? But you know, you get the idea. So I like that. I like that he does come included with it. It's not the easiest, mind you, to get everything going. But at the very least, he does come included with that. All right, so let's talk a little bit about Jon Stewart. You'll excuse me for one split second. I'm going to do my best to kind of get this back into his hand. Ah, oh, it's such a shame that the peg had to come off like that. There we go. We'll just twist that back around. It's actually kind of, I guess, a blessing that it had to happen in front of the camera so that you guys can see it happens to all of us. As for Jon Stewart, I knew this was going to be the figure that I was going to have a lot of talking points to talk about. And sure enough, as the talking points have surfaced, yes, there is a lot to digest for this particular figure. We'll obviously talk about the elephant that's in the room. How'd that get in there? Looking at producer Tony. Tony has no idea how that got in there either. Obviously, the big elephant in the room is Jon Stewart's shoulders. I suppose you could probably talk about other things that aren't quite right with this particular figure, but I think the more obvious one is the fact that his shoulders are way too big. And they're not so much even just way too big, but because they ended up adding this cup socket joint right here, that's what I'm calling it, it causes this disconnect of what should be a continuous green that goes all the way down to the sides of his arms. Because they had to put this socket joint right here on both sides, it causes, like I said, this whole section right here being interrupted by black plastic. If that wasn't the case, you could imagine that the green would continue its merry little way all the way across. And I'm thinking to myself, well, what if they had used a green ball socket or cup socket joint right here? If this was all green, well, then you'd have green down here. 
there's the route of course painting this part but as you're moving this in and out that's going to essentially scrape the paint off it's going to happen no matter what so then i sit down for a second and i'm looking at john stewart and i'm looking at the tv and i'm looking at my tall glass of lemonade and i keep coming up with the same solution to the problem why is this joint even in here in the first place I don't think it had to be the tie-in for the licensing. Of course, McFarlane Toys had to design their figures a certain height, and therefore they weren't, of course, um, kind of treading over, I think, other companies that are already currently doing the Justice League figures, like DC Collectibles. They had to be of a certain size, but I don't think they had to be of a certain construction. I gotta feel like this, this cup socket joint was something that the company decided to incorporate. I honestly don't even see why it needs to even exist. I mean, if you have the torso articulation, which John Stewart does have, and you have the waist articulation, and you already have, like, feasible, what I feel to be, ball and hinge joints right there, why does this ball socket, this cup socket joint, even need to exist? I gotta think if they just simply took these out, took that one out, and obviously took this one out, and just had the arms simply attached to the torso, not only would it look the make the figure look a little bit, I feel, a little bit more presentable where it doesn't look as wide the shoulders, but it certainly would have done away with what I feel is just causing this figure to look disjointed by the fact he's got, like I said, this whole section right here where there's no green to be said or green to be found anywhere whatsoever. Really, I don't feel these need to even be there. And that's even saying for the Superman figure, and that's also saying that for the uh, Batman figure, all of them had these large shoulders, but only were added additionally to length, the width of it, was these extra pieces right there. The comic tie-in figures all had this as well, but they were of a small, smaller, manageable size. These are way too big, and I feel like that's what's causing this figure to look bigger and kind of awkward more awkward than what he should really be as for the head sculpt it's decent enough i think it looks like john stewart but i can sort of feel like with all of these animated tie-in figures that they feel more inspired by they're not trying to be exact carbon copies to what you would expect to get from the animated series figures because again like dc collectibles is already doing that and before anybody jumps on the ch on the chance to ream me out for the fact that I keep comparing it to DC Collectibles, DC Collectibles has faults of its own. One of the biggest issues, of, of course, is the very loose uh, ankles and loose knees that plague all of the DC Collectible figures until they started moving into double ball joints or double hinge joints on the knees. Uh, in this case... I don't feel like Jon Stewart looks exactly like he does in the cartoon as much as he just feels inspired by the cartoon. Like I said, the head sculpt is decent enough. I like that they put the green eyes in there as well. And he does have a more animated tone to him. But he sort of feels lost in kind of a world where it's like the territory's been covered. And now I feel like McFarlane Toys is just simply doing like inspired by figures. And that's really what I feel when I'm looking at Jon Stewart. He feels inspired by. He doesn't feel like I would have, you know, envisioned, if I closed my eyes and envisioned what Jon Stewart would look like from the animated series and put him in plastic form, I would feel like this guy is close, but he's not completely there. Paint on for the uh, emblem there of the Green Lantern emblem is done in a white backdrop with the green raised elevated lantern on the front. I think this is actually a slightly different color as well. I mean, even like the green is a different color in the series. It's kind of more like a, not quite a blue-based green, but it definitely doesn't have, it's not as much the lime green as what we're seeing right here. Uh, additionally to that, other than if you exclude all the green, because he does have green also in his boots, the figure is primarily all black plastic. And they sort of have added extra things in here. Things that the I feel like the animated treatment version of Green Lantern doesn't possess. He doesn't have all these additional panel lines. Sort of, sort of again, leading me to feel like it's more of an inspired figure and not necessarily supposed to be an exact replica or an exact version of that character from the series. Uh, the the thing about it too is like the the arms and the legs are a different type of plastic to his torso, and I'm not really sure what's happened here. Other than maybe the idea that the legs are painted, the arms are painted, but the torso remains still that regular matte plastic. 
uh, Batman had this issue as well where his head, and I believe even possibly his arms or maybe it was his legs, had a different color plastic to his torso. It seems more noticeable here on Jon Stewart. You got very shiny black plastic here and you've sort of got more of a matte black plastic happening right there. The ring, to its credit, the ring actually is decent. They didn't simply just blob a green bit of paint on there. You can see a fully realized, fully sculpted ring. So I really do like that. I mean, like even moving his arms forward, does this benefit at all by the fact that he does have the cup, these socket joints on the sides? It does allow him to get a wider kind of, you can bring the arms in a little bit more, but again, I feel like that could have easily been pulled off with smaller sockets, or at the very least, you could probably have just removed them all together, and he would have just had his arms attached simply just to the, the actual torso piece. Anyways, for this guy's articulation, it's all not all negative after all. His head rotates all the way around. I mean, it has the same issue. There we go, talking a little bit about negatives. He does have the same issue as the Superman. Batman wasn't as bad, but you see a big, very noticeable gap when you start rotating his head. It almost feels like his head isn't far enough down into the neck. But if you have it just centered, like just looking straight at you, it doesn't have too much the gap. A big gap right here, yes, but you're not going to see it. It's almost like the head is way too big for the neck. I guess they've done that so that you could actually move the head all the way around and you have a full freedom for what you can actually do with it. You can move it up and down and you can rock it back and forth. But again, when you are rotating it, uh, you're going to see a big noticeable gap. You can kind of push the head down, but it's, it doesn't really level off the way you really want it to. The torso is on a ball joint. You can move that fully all the way around. The lower uh, section of the torso is also on a ball joint. You can rotate that all the way around. And then again, we get to these. Um, they allow the arms to hinge outward and kind of give you a, a further crunch inward. But again, they just, it looks so sectional when you look at it. It disjoints the rest of the mold and the paint. Again, I just don't feel like it would have been necessary to even have those. The arms rotate all the way around. You can swivel at the bicep. You can hinge at the elbow. This elbow is just a little on the tight side. And you can see there that McFarlane is once again putting in that ratcheted joint for the shoulders or the uh, forearms. Ironically enough, if you look at the legs though, the legs also have what seems to be a ratcheted joint, but they don't have the noisy, well, they don't have the ugly looking little ridges on here that the arms actually had. Like even if you bend the legs both, both times here and here, doesn't have the same sort of joint system that he has in the shoulders or the elbows. I wonder why that's the case. Um, as for the legs, like I said, the legs move out. Get the camera to focus. The legs move out. The legs move forward. The legs move back. He does have no articulation in the, in the boots, but he does have a hinge up and down. You can rotate the feet back and forth, and he has also toe articulation. Again, I have this issue here, which ironically enough is on the same side of his hand. When I am moving the feet up and down, I'm already getting this joint that wants to separate from itself. Um, luckily, if you don't get too aggressive with it, it should stay relatively intact. But I have noticed as I'm moving it too much, you can start seeing how it comes away from itself. And that's a bit of a shame. John Stewart, I knew right from the beginning, let's just get him to stand properly. I knew right from the beginning that John Stewart was going to be the figure I wanted to talk probably the most negative about. Not that I was going in with the expectation that I was going to speak so little and badly of the figure, but it does have a lot of problems. Uh, the problems more or less are just due to the construction of the figure. If you look at just the likeness, if you take a snapshot of just the likeness of it, it's close enough to what we would get from a Justice League cartoon John Stewart. The more accurate representations of these figures are obviously, yeah, you know, the DC collectibles. And again, it's not a, it, it's not intended here that I want to simply just do a comparison back and forth. Um, obviously, both companies, both brands have pros and cons. Whatever the pros were for the company like DC Collectibles to produce the figures where they looked very screen accurate, unfortunately the trade-off for it was that the negative was that the figures always had to be sort of museum posed and they didn't feel like they were getting stable over time. In fact, it was the opposite. They got really loose and limber over time. 
Uh, this one is a feeling like it's a little bit more constructed. It's well, it's better put together. But even then, it has its own problems. The shoulders being, I think, the biggest strike to at least the animated line of the DC Multiverse figures that we've looked at so far. I went into the DC Multiverse line on somewhat a high note. There's hesitation, of course, to the way I said that, because obviously, if you watch any one of these reviews, and I think a lot of people kind of share the same feeling. When you see the figures in the packaging, they're okay. It's when you get them out of the packaging, you get a chance to play around with them, and you get them in different poses, that you sort of start developing more love for the designs that McFarlane decided to go with. The thing about these McFarlane multiverse figures is all of up to this point, all the figures that we've had a look at, were all comic tie-in figures. And then we sort of started entering into the territory of animated figures. And I now feel like the experience has lessened a bit. The Batman and the Superman were okay, but I think a lot of them were masked by the idea that they had capes and things hiding some of their flaws. Unfortunately, Jon Stewart sharing the exact same mold as the other two figures, and because he doesn't have a cape, you can sort of notice the kinks in the armor. They do look like the characters from the cartoon, but I don't feel like they're direct carbon copies, sort of more likenesses or inspirations than anything else. Jon Stewart is, I guess, again, the best example of that. Does he look like Jon Stewart from the animated series Justice League? He does but he doesn't look at as close as DC Collectibles. DC Collectibles has positives and negatives to, of course, their line as well. They look more like the cartoon counterparts, but most of the time you have to display those figures in statue standing poses. You're not going to do anything else with them because over the time that I've had a lot of my DC Collectible animated figures, the, the knees and the ankles have gotten extremely loose, which is really sad. The McFarlane toys feel better constructed, but again, I don't feel like they're as close to proximity of what they should look like in the cartoon. Again, they feel more inspired than anything else. Talking about, though, about the kinks in the armor, again, you really notice it here with Jon Stewart. Because he doesn't have a cape, that socket joint, I don't even know how to describe it, but that shoulder crunch joint that they put in the torsos is ever more apparent here in Jon Stewart because, again, he doesn't have a cape, and I really notice how much I dislike it. If they simply just removed it altogether, I don't even feel the need it has to be there. I get the idea that you can bring the arms up a little bit more, bring them forward and back a little bit more, but at the risk of sacrificing a good, decent enough mold in the torso, you pretty much have put a big divider right in between the shoulder green and the green that's in his torso by putting this big noticeable joint in between the two of them. And it really, in my opinion, I don't feel like it needs to be there. I don't know if maybe we're going to sort of move our way out of it. I can't certainly speak for Todd McFarlane. You never know, maybe the future wave of animated figures, he might just completely disband the idea of using that joint, or you never know, he might continue to use them. The thing about Jon Stewart, ironically enough, talking about Justice League, what it reminds me of is when the first run of, I guess it was Mattel, was still doing Justice League figures back in the day. Do you remember when the figures went from being five-point articulated figures, basically legs, arms, and head, and then they started adding some additional ball joints? And remember those early figures, how awkward they looked? Because you could really see the ball joints working in the shoulders and in the legs. It just didn't work at all. That's sort of the same vibe that I'm getting when I'm looking at Jon Stewart. I didn't notice it as much in Superman. I certainly did not notice it as much in Batman. But it stands out like a sore thumb here on Jon Stewart. Couple that with the fact the idea is you got to take the fist off the hand. I'm having still problems with the pegs. I was lucky enough to able actually to remove it altogether. And I'll probably just likely to display him with the gun construct. It looks cool enough. And I think it kind of elevates the figure. But I don't know why they couldn't have simply just made the socket big enough that you could have actually fit the fist into. Uh, a lot of, unfortunately, little talking points, mostly negative for Jon Stewart. Like I said, he unfortunately sort of has the... He takes the title of being the character that has the more visible flaws to this line. If I was basing all of my line's experience, at least the animated treatment, from Jon Stewart... I'd have a pretty low opinion of the animated stuff. My highs are there for the comic tie-in figures, but the animated figures I've still really honestly been yet to be sold on. Am I being too hard on this line? At least the animated figures. Let me know down below in the comment section what you guys think of them so far. 
and if you've had a chance to pick up John Stewart for yourself. We're obviously not done yet. The DC Multiverse figures, there's going to be a whole bunch of stuff still coming your way. We're kind of now going to go back a bit to the comic tie-in characters because there's a bunch of other figures that we're going to be having a look at. The key, though, is making sure that you're staying tuned to this channel. You can do that by hitting that subscribe button down below. You can do that by hitting the bell notification. And you can do that by keeping your peepers peeled for future videos coming onto this channel. As always, thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys next time.